And thanks for inviting us in tonight at 11. You know, it's been less than 10 hours since our governor announced that statewide mask mandate, which starts on Monday. And already, boy, we've been seeing some pushback from Indiana's top attorney. Within the last couple of hours, Attorney General Curtis Hill came out saying the governor does not have the authority to criminalize violations. Hill went on to say the governor should call a special legislative session for lawmakers to decide the issue. Well, that debate aside, let's take a look tonight at what this mandate covers. You'll have to wear a mask inside any public building, and if you're outside and social distancing isn't possible. Now, this applies to anyone eight and older. Masks are recommended for anyone older than the age of two. They'll be required at schools for third grade on up and for any extracurricular activities. Now, there are a few exceptions for people with certain medical conditions and for strenuous activity, things like running or for people eating or drinking in public. Now, violating this order is a misdemeanor, but state leaders say they'll be focusing more on educating people instead of punishing them. And complaints should go to the health department, not police. Please know the mask police will not be patrolling Hoosier streets. Now, police departments are already responding tonight with warnings of their own. Look at this Facebook post out of Martinsville telling residents police will not respond to complaints about face masks. Now, we've seen lots of misconceptions about masks making the rounds online tonight. So our Karen Campbell is now debunking the big ones. COVID-19 cases in Indiana are on the rise again. There have been more than 600 cases per day for nine days in a row. It's the first time that has happened during the pandemic. Reasons why Governor Holcomb issued a statewide mandate on Wednesday for Hoosiers to mask up beginning July 27th. This is not about what I want to do or wished uh, would be. This is what the reality is. A reality Holcomb says others don't want to believe. Is there's virtually nothing that government does except be bad. Protesters marched at the state house this week have argued wearing a mask causes oxygen deprivation. Healthcare leaders say that's false. Another argument, wearing a mask causes toxic carbon dioxide levels. Also false. And there's more. The mask is going to cause you to become more ill because you're going to rebreathe droplets. That's not true. That's a myth. Um, the mask is uh, in some way going to affect you know, your ability to cough or expel secretions. That's not true. That's a myth. Some businesses added more signs alerting customers of the mask requirement inside of their business. Now, off camera, workers have shared with us that customers have yelled, screamed obscenities, even thrown things all because they choose not to wear a mask. The addition of enforcement to seatbelt usage increased uh, Americans' propensity to put a seatbelt on in less than 16 months from 18% to 88%. And so the, um, the mandate, we believe, will help to change behavior for those who might be on the fence. Even the president said yesterday that this is going to get worse across the country. Said it was a patriotic uh, duty or action to wear a mask. A mask? that can help save lives. Now, if you're wondering why now, the governor said today it's because our state is seeing an increase in the positivity rate and hospitalizations. They also want to focus on getting schools and businesses back open. Now, according to a report from the Center for Public Integrity, the White House just named Indianapolis one of 11 cities across the country that need to take aggressive steps to tackle this coronavirus. Well, today the governor also unveiled a plan for schools if a student or a staff member tests positive for COVID-19. So step one, find anyone who spent more than 15 minutes within six feet of the person for 48 hours before the person tested positive or started showing symptoms. Close contacts would have to quarantine at home for 14 days. Now, if any of them test positive, the process starts all over again. Now, if classes don't have assigned seating, like in pre-K through second grade, an entire class may have to be quarantined. A classroom will have to close after two confirmed cases of COVID-19. Now, to minimize the risk of spreading the coronavirus, our state is recommending schools space desks as far apart as possible. Plan schedules. That way, a smaller number of students are close contacts. Group younger kids in the pods and avoid classroom parties for birthdays or other events. That'll keep students from coming into close contact with each other. All those changes will likely start the very second your kid hops on the school bus.